This instructional video is to provide quick screen instructions for the Mako AeroScan, the GSI Corti, and the Welch Allen New Generation OAE Screener. Essentially the same piece of equipment that has just been packaged and branded for the various companies. The hardware and firmware versions of these pieces of equipment are current as of fall 2015. While we will be using the Mako AeroScan for this video, please remember all of the parts and the basic operations are the same for all three pieces of equipment. Think of it as the cliff notes for using your particular brand of screening equipment. It is not intended to provide instruction on what OAE screening is or other screening program protocols or details. For detailed information on OAE screening in early childhood, visit kidshearing.org. The equipment comes to you in a case with the user manuals that are either in printed or in digital form. You should review them and then refer to them in your equipment rep for questions you may have. This video, however, will provide the most important user elements to help you get up and running, get you screening children quickly. Now let's unpack your equipment. All the equipment has four main parts. The first is the test box or test unit, which is really the computer with the firmware and the controls to run the test. The second is the probe assembly. This is the part that goes into the ear and stimulates the ear and then records the autoacoustic emission or OAE coming back out. Next is the charger or the power unit. This is the adapter used to charge the unit. And then the fourth common element to all pieces of equipment are the probe covers or probe tips. These are the little tips that will go on the probe and they come in a variety of sizes so that they can fit um, ch children of different ages and a different one is used for each individual child. The first thing you'll need to do is to charge the unit. You'll need to plug the charger into the unit like this and then plug it into a wall outlet and let it charge. It's important to know that it'll take about three to four hours to fully charge the rechargeable battery. Once it's charged, you'll get about a thousand tests or about 20 hours of testing before it needs recharged. It's important to not fully deplete the battery for maximum battery life. You'll want to charge it when it's five to 10% of battery life remaining. So when the unit is fully charged, the charge light, the blue charge light will come on and blink. The unit is now charged and ready to test. So you can unplug it. And now we'll want to attach the, the probe assembly, which goes with the name on the top, and it plugs directly into the top. And now we'll be ready to, to test. We'll now want to pick a probe tip and put it on. So you'll choose the appropriate size probe tip, and you want to push it all the way down to the base so that it's all flush with the base. You'll then insert the probe into the ear. Once the probe is placed firmly in the ear, you're ready to begin screening. With this particular piece of equipment, there are only two button pushes needed to begin. Turn, use the down arrow to turn the unit on, and either the right or the left arrow buttons to begin to screen, depending on the ear. Push it, and the test begins. and this test is a pass, and you'll get either a pass or a refer. There is no need to save tests. The machine automatically saves the results of completed tests up till 250 tests. Once it reaches that limit, the oldest tests will fall off and the new tests will be added. Now to turn the machine off, you can do one of two things. You can either hold the top button down and the machine will turn off, or the machine will turn itself off by automatically after one minute of inactivity. One thing to keep in mind with this equipment, this particular equipment, 
is in screening children who are known to have PE tubes. To test children with PE tubes, the auto start needs to be disabled. This is accomplished by first inserting the probe with the appropriate ear tip into the ear canal and getting a good fit. Then to disable the auto start, press the down button to turn the machine on and then you will select either the right or the left arrow keys and hold them down for three seconds until the green ready button turns itself off. Once that key is released, then the machine will calibrate and test as before. So hold either the right or the left arrow keys down for three seconds until the green ready light turns off, then the machine will calibrate and test. and then this test is a pass. Now let's do some exercises in testing yourself. Go ahead and clip the cord on and place the probe firmly into your ear. Now let's turn our machine on by holding the down arrow. And Before we do this, we're going to go ahead and test, but this time we want to generate what's known as internal noise, or noise that's generated from the person being screened. So we're screening ourselves, I'm screening myself, and I'm going to go ahead and talk and count um, while the screening is done. And uh, so watch both myself and the screen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. And then this test says that it is noisy, and that's because I was generating too much noise for the test to continue. Now the second exercise will be to screen yourself, but in the presence of background noise. You, as the person being screened, will be quiet. So go ahead and get a firm fit. Place the probe and get a firm fit. Turn your machine on and have your person who is assigned to make the background noise ready to begin push the button, and begin the screening. Now have them be quiet. And the test should complete. There is a noise indicator light as well as a noise error message on the screen. After your screening is completed, remove the used tip. All of the tips are disposable and are designed for one person um, use only and should be discarded after use. If a probe tip is clogged between ears, discard it and use a new one for that individual child. To clean your unit, just wipe it down with um, an antiseptic wipe that is appropriate for your um, setting and has been approved for your, from your health advisory committee. Um, just wipe it down clean. Do not put any pressure on the screens and always clean the probe away from the opening, never towards it, so that you don't get any moisture into the tip. Another thing to remember for your equipment is to plan in annual calibration. It should be completed annually to ensure accuracy and to t obtain um, any new software updates that, um, that are available for your machine. Thank you for your time and good luck screening.